Hello, I'm Gary Cleveland with Cleveland Helicopter Services here in Plymouth, Indiana, and we will be doing a quick video on pressure altitude and density altitude and how it relates to the helicopter in ground effect and out of, out of ground effect hover. And we'll go through a scenario that you may face uh, on your helicopter practical, otherwise referred to as check ride. I've drawn a uh, out of ground effect and in ground effect uh, hover ceiling chart uh, that's kind of a make believe numbers uh, roughly going off the R44 uh, POH just for the purpose of demonstrating how to use these charts. If you go online you can actually print the in ground effect and out of ground effect charts from the R44 pilot operating handbook. So to start with pressure altitude is basically what you get when you put 2992 in the Colesman window. In other words on your altimeter You've got the little window off to the side that is where you would put 2992 in and the correlating altitude would be your pressure altitude. That's one way of saying what pressure altitude is. Another way to understand it is pressure altitude is a performance altitude given non-standard barometric pressure. Standard barometric pressure is 2992. In other words, if you are uh, experiencing a standard day of 2992 and you have a known field elevation at your airport of 800 MSL, such as here at Plymouth, Indiana. When you get ready to fly the aircraft, you put the known field elevation in of 800 MSL, you should see 2992 in the Colesman window, if it is a standard day. If you put 800 in your altimeter, as the known field elevation at Plymouth, Indiana, you can then look over and see what the barometric pressure is for the day. If it is a non-standard day, it will not be 2992. Low pressure is bad for performance. In other words, if the, if the barometric pressure for the day is less than 2992, that is low pressure. And that starts to cut, in, cut into the performance of the helicopter. The helicopter will perform as if it is at a higher elevation, closer to its ceiling. High pressure is good for performance. Now, pressure altitude is affected by temperature and that then gives us density altitude. So the definition of density altitude is pressure altitude corrected for non-standard temperature. Standard temperature is 59 degrees Fahrenheit or 15 degrees Celsius. And you will also find in some pilot operating handbooks a chart to figure density altitude from pressure altitude given the temperature. Now in the Robinson pilot operating handbook, you do not have to figure density altitude because of the way they do their in-ground effect and out-of-ground effect uh, hover ceilings. They have pressure altitude on one side of the scale, gross weight, and then temperatures listed 
And so it is figuring the density altitude ceiling for you since the temperature is within the, uh, the graph that you're using. Uh, Robinson handbooks, although do have a chart to convert from uh, pressure altitude to density altitude, uh, should you want to figure that uh, given a non-standard temperature. Um, but to figure the ceilings for the Robinson, you do not have to figure density altitude first. You can just plug it into one of the uh, graphs. So now we've talked about what uh, pressure altitude is. It's what you get when you put 2992 in the McColzman window, or it's performance altitude for a non-standard barometric pressure. We know that low pressure is bad and will cause uh, pressure altitude uh, to be higher. We know that high pressure is good and will cause pressure altitude to be lower. So let's talk about uh, a scenario that you may be given on your check ride and uh, both examiners that I've used in the past couple of years have done this and what they will do is they will give you a make-believe airport and they will ask you to figure if you can hover in and out of ground effect when you get to that airport. They will give you the airport elevation. So let's say uh, let's say they're going to give you an airport elevation of 6,000 MSL. Um, a pretend airport in the uh, in the mountains somewhere. They may pick an airport uh, in the mountains and go with that information to be more real for you. But let's say we're talking about uh, airport XYZ and the field elevation is 6,000 MSL. And let's say we call up on the uh, weather source if they have a ASOS or AWOS and we find out that the barometric pressure for the day out there is 29 zero zero so we know right off we have a low pressure day which is going to raise uh, the performance altitude in other words the pressure altitude will be higher than the 6,000 known MSL and let's say that uh, the temperature out there is uh, 30 degrees Celsius so Given this information, we first have to figure pressure altitude. So we will take uh, 2992, the standard, subtract 2900. We have 0.92, drop the decimal and add a zero. 920 is the number that we'll be working with. So then we need to know what to do with that 920. Do we add it or subtract it from 6,000? This is where you have to look and see, are we talking about low pressure or high pressure? Again, we're talking about low pressure that is bad for performance. That tells us to add it. So the helicopter will think it is operating at 6920 MSL. That's our pressure altitude. So now let's look at how to use these graphs. Can we hover in ground effect when we get there? Let's pretend that uh, the helicopter weighs 2,400 pounds on this given day, the way we have it loaded with uh, cargo, people, and fuel. So the first thing you do is find 2400 and this is for in ground effect we are going to be able to hover a lot higher in ground effect than we will out of ground effect and so we take 2400 and we go up and we find 30 degrees celsius it's right here then we're going to shoot straight across and see that we can hover just under 8000 MSL if it's 30 degrees and our aircraft weighs 24. We'll be able to hover just under 8,000 uh, feet pressure altitude. 
So we know we're good to go because 6920 is less than, um, than what we came out with for the end ground effect hover ceiling. So let's go over and see if we'll be able to hover out of ground effect at this same airport. And I remind you that these um, graphs I drew bigger uh, just to demonstrate how to use them. They are not to scale and the numbers are not to be relied upon uh, you know, as an actual performance uh, when you go out to fly. You need to look in your POH and you need to uh, carefully look look at the graphs that are in your POH and figure what your hover ceilings are for the day. So this is uh, simply a not to scale uh, depiction of the in and out of ground effect hover ceiling charts uh, from a POH or pilot operating handbook. Okay, so let's look over here. 24 is going to come in right here between 23 and 25. And um, we need to go up and intersect uh, 30 degrees Celsius. So we're going to go up until it hits 30 degrees Celsius right there. And then we're going to shoot straight across from 30 degrees Celsius. And it looks like on this uh, not to scale chart, our pressure altitude hover ceiling for out of ground effect is 5,000 feet. And we look back here, and guess what? We're not going to be able to hover out of ground effect at this airport given the conditions on this day. Uh, so that would be your answer then for the examiner when he comes back in the room um, after giving you a little bit of time to, to do this uh, performance uh, calculation. Um, would you fly out there on this day? Possibly yes, because we don't need to hover out of ground effect. We do need to hover in ground effect when we get there um, at the end of our approach. And again, to take off. So hopefully this helps, and if you like the video, click the like button, subscribe to the channel, click the bell, you'll be notified as new videos come out. I will continue to add uh, helicopter ground school videos to my YouTube channel uh, for you to access for free. And keep in mind that my videos are not edited, it's just me being me, teaching you on a whiteboard uh, here at Plymouth, Indiana, just as I would if you were right here in the room. And we hope to see you someday. Thank you.